Hello and welcome to Bounding Into Comics. My name is John Trent. I'm the founder and editor-in-chief at Bounding Into Comics. And today, we're going to talk about Loki Season 1, Episode 3, Lamentous. Before we get to the review, I'd like to ask if you could please hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. If you are already subscribed, please make sure you are still subscribed. YouTube likes to unsubscribe people for whatever reason. And then hopefully by the end of this video, I will have earned your like and that you will give us a like and that you'll also share this with your friends and family. And on top of that, I hope you'll also hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future Bounding Into Comics videos. With that out of the way, let's get to this Loki review. So we're going to just jump right to it. After encountering the female Loki variant in the second episode and following her through a time portal, Loki eventually ends up on the planet Lamentus 1. The episode Lamentus begins with a wine mom flashback scene as the female Loki has some kind of tropical alcoholic drink with the captured TVA Minuteman. It's eventually revealed this is part of female Loki's enchantment powers as she attempts to extract the location of the timekeepers from the Minuteman. The scene is completely useless and unnecessary as we already knew that female Loki had obtained the location from a sense of dialogue in the past episode. It's just added fluff to attract Disney's new wine mom audience they seemingly want so desperately. Maybe they'll get it, but at the same time, more scenes like this will drive away former MCU fans much like they have in their comics department because it's completely useless and it's boring. It really doesn't add anything to the character. It, it's There's no point in this scene whatsoever. And, it, and, it, and it's a pretty long scene. It's about uh, three, four minutes. And after wasting three or four minutes of your life watching this wine mom scene, the show finally does revert to where it left off in the variant. Sylvie, or the female Loki, has actually traveled to the TVA and discovers she can't use her powers, but proceeds to beat down every single TVA agent she comes across. Something Loki wasn't able to do, given he was actually subdued and captured by the TVA, almost immediately in the first episode. But remember, she's the superior Loki after all. Upon first viewing, the combat is somewhat decent, but if you look at it a second time, it's a whole lot worse than what you might see on WWE. I think at one point, female Loki ends up hitting one guard with the palm of her hand instead of her bald fist, as they want you to believe. It's just, it's really that bad. It looks cheap. It doesn't look like they did a lot of rehearsal. And whoever they have doing the fight choreography, uh, they should they should either fire them or pay them a lot more to do a whole lot better job because it was it was not very good. Uh, after dispatching these TVA guards, Loki eventually arrives. He gets his daggers and begins to follow the trail of bodies left behind by female Loki. Uh, and then we cut to her, and she's continuing to beat down TVA agents with ease. Remember, the, in the second episode, she actually wasn't even trying to fight the TVA agents. She was using another guard to do her dirty work. In this case, though, she's just going around just beating them up. So it's like, why didn't she just do that in the first place? And that seems to be her modus operandi in this episode. Fight first, ask questions later. Whereas, literally, we saw her previously where she was always trying to stay in the shadows not really kind of get her hands dirty, letting other, uh, using her enchantment powers to do the dirty work. So even the way she's using her powers is contradicting uh, the way they're trying to portray the character uh, in this episode. So you have a contradiction of who this character is already, uh, which is just bad writing. And there's a lot of bad writing in this episode, and that's just one example. Uh, eventually, Loki catches up with her, and the two duke it out. The fight is very, very reminiscent of the Boba fight. Uh, Boba, Boba Fett fight scene from the Mandalorian season two finale. Uh, female Loki gets in the first blow. Loki eventually gets uh, one on his own footing. And then the two end in like this stupid draw. It's like, oh, look, they're actually equal. It was predictable and it was it was boring. There was like the fight didn't feel like it had any real stakes because it doesn't. There's no real stakes in that fight. Uh, Renslayer eventually shows up and Loki uses a teleportation device. Uh, which transports the two Lokis to Lamentus 1, hence the title of the episode being Lamentus. Uh, upon arriving, the two can wrestle around over the teleportation device. Female Loki eventually wins and grabs the, the device, but upon trying to use it, she discovers it's no longer working, and she's quite perplexed about why it's no longer working, which is absolutely hysterical given later... <laughs> 
on in this episode. She's supposed to be the tech savvy expert who knows how to recharge the device and fix it uh, and, and, and do all this stuff when they literally show her like not understanding why it's not working. And even when it says like power low, need recharge, it's just hor again, horrible writing uh, and, and horrible execution and presentation as well. It's just, it's really bad. Loki eventually recovers, uses some magic, finally, finally we're getting to see him use his magic, uh, and he reacquires the device. However, the duel is interrupted as a piece of moon debris comes flying through the building they were in. The camera pans out and we get a shot of a strip mine. We are told it's a foreign planet. That's when we get, when it's revealed that it's Lamentus One. But the only thing really out of this world about it is the filter they put on it. It's a purple filter. Uh, so they're trying to make it look alien by having this purple filter on it, but it, it literally looks like a mine. It doesn't feel like an alien planet at all. The construction vehicles are vehicles you've seen on the side of the road doing construction work in 2021. So it's just the set, the set there is just really bad. Uh, but more debris comes crashing down and they have to make a run for it, eventually finding safety in a mine shack. The whole point of the episode is then revealed as they tell us that they need to find an energy source capable of recharging the teleportation device, as I kind of already mentioned earlier. Uh, they leave the shack and the debris mysteriously doesn't come down aiming at them anymore, despite the moon surrounding the planet where the debris was coming from is getting closer and closer to the planet. And the whole point of them, uh, the whole point of like this place is one of those uh, apocalyptic areas. The moon like comes in and like crushes the planet and everyone dies. Um, but, but the debris all, like all of a sudden stops coming down, uh, after they leave the shack and they just go on a nice little saunter through the, or through the planet, through this little mine area until they get to like the, the town, the mining town, which is abandoned. Uh, and it was just really bad. I get the special effects budget must have all been spent on the purple filter because other than that, they, they didn't really do a good job. Uh, the two easily walk through the mine, and there's a bunch of dialogue making you know that these two characters are completely different. In fact, they are so different, female Loki doesn't even want to go by Loki anymore, instead going by Sylvie, which is the name of Enchantress in the comics. It's just, un you don't even need it. It's really, like, we got it. These people are different characters. We already know that. You don't need to, like, keep hitting, it o hitting us over the head with it. This is the same problem they had in episode one where they kept trying to repeat stuff and they're trying to tell you instead of showing you, which they've already shown us, so we don't really need to be told it again. Uh, it's really an insult to their audience. They, that's how, how they think you're stupid. They think you can't understand what they're showing you. It's really bad. Um, like I said, the two eventually end up in this abandoned mine town. Nothing happens besides some bickering. They eventually make their way to a house on the edge of town. So I really don't even understand why they had the abandoned town. It looks like they either they digitally created the town or they created a set piece, but they literally just walked through it. So I don't even know why they did that. It was like, like again, I said, useless. Uh, they eventually make their way to a house on the edge of town, stopping. Again, <laughs> this is also pointless too. They stop at this house. A woman shoots them. It's like, like supposed to be some kind of like, it's a Western trope, obviously, but the whole point of stopping there. Uh, is for them to like get directions to this train that's going to take them to the city where the Ark is located. However, we find out later that like Sylvie already knew all of this. She knew that the Ark is there, and then she actually knows that the Ark blows up before it leaves the planet because everyone dies on the everyone dies. So yeah, why was she even trying to stop stop there? Uh, it d doesn't really make sense. It's it, I, again another example of the bad writing. Uh, as far as the uh, the only other purpose I can think of for this scene, it's just to show just how dumb both versions of the of Loki are because they both just get blasted away, uh, and it, it looks like it's just there to denigrate the two protagonists. Which, again, I don't understand why you would do that because we've already seen this other one who's basically been outsmarting the TVA. Now she's just getting like blown away by some lady in her house. It's just really really bad. The two Lokis eventually arrive at the train station where the two have to sneak on with Loki disguising himself as a guard with a captured Sylvie. When things start going sideways, Sylvie enchants another guard and the two get on the train. Uh, this whole this whole idea here is low effort and the idea of sneaking onto a train being a challenge for both of these characters, again, is insulting. I think it's an insult to the characters. It's an insult to the audience, uh, especially since we just saw Loki use teleportation magic to get the upper hand on Sylvie earlier in the episode. It's almost like he could have just teleported onto the train and they wouldn't have had any problems. 
another example of the bad writing. And again, I think there's insult. It's an insult to the audience, and it's an insult to the characters. Uh, and Marvel Studios should be ashamed of themselves for the way that they're portraying both of these characters. Once on the train, the episode grounds to a halt, like literally. So this is where they're actually supposed to be on the train moving, but this is where the episode just like gets super, super, super boring. Uh, there's some absolutely terrible dialogue about what seat they should sit in and how terrible their plan to get on the train was. They then bicker about sleeping with Sylvie specifically saying she won't sleep on the train with like untrustworthy people. Uh, then there's like re Loki reminiscing about his mom and the two talk about their different different experiences being Loki. It's, it's really, really boring and I don't even care about it and they should have just cut it because it's just really bad. Uh, it finally ends with Sylvie telling them to take some rest, which again, another point of the bad writing, because she all had just said previously she wasn't going to sleep in the company of Loki, who she doesn't trust, but now she's like, let's go get some rest. And then she proceeds to fall asleep. <laughs> so I just, wh like, what are you doing? Like, did anyone review this script and point out, like, how dumb this is? Apparently not. We got a bunch of amateurs over at Marvel Studios now. The most enjoyable part of this episode is when Sylvie wakes up and Loki is out of his disguise. He's back in his like TVA suit, which I don't know why he would be stay in that. It's really weird that he would go back to that when he could just put himself in his regular Loki garb. But he's in his TVA stuff and he's enjoying himself. It sounds like an Irish jig. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's actually entertaining and you want to be throwing a beer back with Loki. But with that said, while it is the most enjoyable part of the episode and I really enjoyed that, that music, it's completely out of character for Loki and much more like Thor. So remember, Loki's usually the one who's, who's trying to manipulate other people. Instead, he's just throwing it back like Thor would, just like enjoying his time. And I guess we did see Loki doing that a little bit when he was Odin and he was just kind of enjoying everything and letting everything um, just go to crap in Asgard. But th that's not where he's at. He's not in charge here. He's still trying to attain that power. He's never actually attained that power. This Loki hasn't. So, again, a very out of character. And it was more reminiscent of something that Thor would do rather than Loki. Not only that, but he puts their entire plan at risk by shedding his disguise. Something Loki would not do. From there, a fight ensues after a guard asks for their tickets, and instead of producing the tickets, Loki magics a bunch of fireworks from his hands. Again, I don't know, that's really, I, I don't know, trying to make Loki look stupid, because if that's what they're doing, that's what they got. I don't, it, maybe it was supposed to be like really bad humor. It wasn't funny, it was just really, it looked just terrible. Uh, the guards proceed to try and arrest him, uh, so a fight breaks out. Fight choreography is lacking again, and then Loki gets beat down by two humans and then thrown out of the train. Uh, it's just really pathetic. Loki would not be getting beat up by two humans. Remember, this is the same Loki who almost conquered Earth and was manipulating the Avengers and was standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, five Avengers. Um, the only person who really beats him up is Hulk. Uh, now he's getting tossed out of train windows by mere humans. After being tossed out of the train, Sylvie jumps after him because she needs the teleportation device, but it's for not because the teleportation device has been destroyed in the fall. Nevertheless, the two continue their journey to the city on foot. When they get there, they aim to board the Ark and make sure it leaves the planet. However, upon taking up this new plan, Sylvie reveals the whole idea of seeking information about the Ark was completely and utterly pointless because she already knew about it and that it actually doesn't end up leaving the planet because it gets destroyed. That's right. She had all this information. She knew where the Ark was. She knew all of this stuff, but they had to go through this journey anyways because who knows why. It's bad, bad writing, that's why. As they try to reach the arc, the series' low-budget special effects and fight choreography are on full display. The fighting is really, really bad here. There are some scenes where Loki is just like shoving people and they just go flying. There's like absolutely no real fighting. It doesn't even, it looks so fake. It looks so bad. Uh, and then he's just like owning these people. But remember just a few short scenes ago, he was getting thrown out of a train by them, but <laughs> similar types of guards. So who knows what they're doing? Um, again, so not only is the fight choreography bad, but the whole premise makes no sense. Uh, the show ends with the arc being destroyed and Sylvie and Loki walking in the opposite direction of the destroyed arc. 
I actually think this is a pretty good ending. It's a good pickle to put them in, and it's somewhat interesting. I'm somewhat interested to see how they will get out of it. Uh, I think putting characters in no-win situations and then using your imagination to figure out how they're going to get out of it is interesting, and I feel like they're in this no-win situation. So I like that ending, but everything leading up to it was boring and drab. This was the worst episode yet, and it doesn't look like things are going to be getting any better based on what we saw in this episode. So to conclude, the third episode of Loki is the worst episode of the entire series so far, yet it is also the one with the most action. However, the action scenes are uncompelling and drop you out of the show. Fight choreography was really bad. Not only are the action scenes lacking, but the set design and graphics are really, really bad. Uh, it looks like you could just be driving down the highway and, and <laughs> that's where you are instead of some alien planet. It, it's really not what you expect from Marvel Studios and is really poor quality. There are also plenty of story contradictions that will be hard to swallow for even the shallowest of viewers. And finally, as with the previous two episodes, it was just plain dull and boring with dialogue that drags on and on and never feels like it's going to end. It's like a never-ending story of nothingness. Let me know what you thought about Loki. Those are my thoughts. My name is John Trent, and you've been watching Bounty in the Comics.